Tonight on News 30, elections are here, so where can you go to place your vote? And Breast Cancer Awareness Month comes to a close, and we will look just at the awareness that was created in the community. Welcome to News 30. I'm Lindsay Skinner. And I'm Hannah Morris. An unmanned NASA rocket exploded Tuesday night at Wallops Island, Virginia. The rocket was headed to the International Space Station. It launched at 6.22 p.m., but soon after taking off a failure shocked onlookers as the rocket blew up. The rocket was carrying 5,000 pounds of food, supplies, science experiments, and the rocket itself cost about $2 million, $200 million. The reams from Orbital, NASA, and the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport began searching for debris the next day in hopes to discover the failure. The $10,000 Ten Commandments monument no longer sits outside the Oklahoma State Capitol. A man deliberately drove his car into the monument this weekend and was afterward detained in the federal building after making derogatory comments about President Obama. According to the suspect, Satan told the man to damage the monument. Secret Service agent David Allison told the press that the man urinated on the monument before returning to his car to run over it. The monument was only recently ruled as not in the violation of the Oklahoma Constitution. The suspect was taken to a mental facility shortly after the incident. Car accidents can be very frightening, but they don't typically involve an aircraft. A single engine airplane struck an SUV during an emergency landing in Ardmore. No one was injured in the collision, but the driver told the Daily Ardmore Wright that the impact bent a bar in the roof of his SUV. According to the Ardmore Fire Department, Captain Chad Mansfield, the pilot of the propeller plane, was having trouble landing the Ardmore Downtown Executive Airport on Sunday, complaining of mechanical difficulties. An occupied landing strip forced him to circle the area to find a place to land. An Oklahoma man died this weekend when his motorcycle collided with a deer in bro near Broken Arrow. According to the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, the collision happened Sunday night as the man drove north on the turnpike in Wagner County. Upon collision, 39-year-old Jason Ashlock was thrown several yards from his motorcycle, then struck by another oncoming vehicle. Ashlock was transported to a Tulsa hospital and from there was pronounced dead. Kickapoo construction has been a normal thing for citizens of Shawnee. It's also been a very frustrating thing. So here's reporter Nicole Smith with more. As we all know, the construction in Shawnee has been going on for quite some time. This not only affects the drivers on the road, but also some of the local businesses in the town of Shawnee. I spoke to the owner of the Heavenly Grind, who said that while they have only been open for a year, they did notice that once the construction started, there was a 50% drop in sales during the first four months. They also mentioned that they were given no estimated time as to how long the construction would last. While it can be annoying at times, they feel that the construction outcome will be worth it and that the construction crew as well as the company have been great. I'm Nicole Smith reporting. Governor Mary Fallon is hitting the road to continue her re-election campaign. In the next week, she will be traveling across the state of Oklahoma with U.S. Representatives Frank Lucas and Tom Cole. Monday, Fallon plans to visit Woodward, Alva, Helena, and Fairview. People in Chickasha, Lawton, Anadarko, Newcastle, and Duncan will have an opportunity to see her on Wednesday. On Wednesday, Fallon will visit Enid, Medford, and Ponca City. On Thursday, she will be joined by Cole as she stops in Purcell, Davis, Ardmore, and Pauls Valley. 
The Friday will conclude her travels as she visits Miami, Vanita, Adair, Pryor Creek, and Tahlequah. Fallon will be opposing Democratic State Representative Joe Dorman in the November 4th general election. During the November 4th election, Shawnee residents will be asked to vote on whether or not alcohol should be served in restaurants on Sunday in Pottawatomie County. Voters will also choose between Republican Joy Hoffmeister and Democrat John Cox for state superintendent. Senator Tom Coburn is retiring from his position and Democrat Connie Johnson will face Republican nominee James Lankford. Lankford will be stepping away from his role as a U.S. representative, leaving voters to choose between Democrat Al McCaffrey and Republican Steve Russell to fill Lankford's position. To vote in the November 4th general election, voters must be registered at least 24 days prior to the election. To vote in Shawnee, go to Pottawatomie Election Office found on 325 North Broadway Avenue, Suite 105 in Shawnee. Polls will be open from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. on November 4th. During the month of October, we have celebrated breast cancer awareness with the efforts made in Shawnee and look way of pre prevention and knowledge. That's coming up next. All of us here at News 30 encourage all women to follow the necessary steps to detect breast cancer as early as possible. We would like to applaud the bravery of those currently battling breast cancer as well as the survivors and those who are no longer with us. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all of you and your families. Breast Cancer Awareness Month is a month where a community can stand together to raise support and recognition. It is also a month where we can ask questions about what we can do to stay healthy and not be caught off guard by the disease. As you can tell, your News 30 crew is repping their pink tonight. St. Anthony, Anthony's was one who contributed this month by raising support for women who may not be able to afford a mammogram. Reporter Nicole Smith has more on that. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Here in the town of Shawnee at St. Anthony Hospital, there will be numerous events for breast cancer awareness. On October 9th and 23rd, there will be an event known as Pink Day for any women in the town of Shawnee who would like to come and get educated about breast cancer awareness. I spoke with the Director of Public Relations, Communications, and Marketing to find out just what they have planned. Painting with a Purpose is um, our theme this year for our 19th annual Think Pink event. And every year we do something different. This year we're doing a special painting class and women can come and create their own masterpiece. And then they can also learn some breast cancer information and have fun with their friends. So our speaker this year is our new OBGYN, Dr. Elise Slayball, and she will be talking about um, the latest information on breast cancer and talking about uh, mammograms and self breast exams. And the shirts you see are going to be worn by employees during the month of October to show their support for breast cancer awareness. So this year we will be providing 10 free mammograms to women who um, are patients at the Volunteer Health Clinic of Pottawatomie County. I'm Nicole Smith reporting. Oklahoma Baptist University's Lady Bison volleyball team raised money for breast cancer research at their Dig Pink game. Mm -hmm. Even though the night ended on a loss for the Lady Bison, they raised $450 online for the Side Out Foundation and additional funds through their Dig Pink t-shirt sales. Another important subject to look at during Breast Cancer Awareness Month is breast cancer prevention. Reporter Jordan Hunt has more. It's a good idea to get to know your body and be familiar with what's normal for you so that you'll be more likely to notice any changes. Getting unusual or persistent changes checked out by your doctor is important because while it may not turn out to be breast cancer, if it is, getting diagnosed and treated at an early stage can make a real difference. Online, there are many articles that give examples of symptoms to look for, though oftentimes these symptoms turn out to be something much less serious but it is still important to get it checked out. Unfortunately, the reality is that not very many women these days get these checkups. We asked some of the students on OBU's campus if they do anything to check for breast cancer. 
Um, I have not, mainly because I don't know how, and I don't have family that's ever had breast cancer, so it really hasn't concerned me at all. So. Okay. Um, my parents just never like asked me to like go to the doctor, and like I was never just told that that was like a very needed thing until I was older, and so I guess I should start doing that now since I am an adult. Yeah, I have, and my mom had breast cancer, and so did my grandma, and so. I do. I go to the doctor. I haven't, just because I haven't really thought about it. Um, no, I haven't. I don't really know why. It's just never really come up, I guess. But I guess now that I am 19, I probably should. The good news is, you don't even have to leave Shawnee to begin taking these precautionary measures to check for cancer. We talked to Shawnee Family Medical Center, and they said that they offer precautionary examinations, including pap smears, clinical breast examinations, mammograms, and even blood work and x-rays. There are other self-checking methods that you can do at home. This has been Jordan Hunt reporting to you from News 30. Since Breast Cancer Awareness Month is coming to a close, I spoke to a few OBU students talking about the social taboo of breast cancer and what the pink ribbon really means to them. So let's take a look at what they said. Measures that can be taken to reduce the risk of breast cancer, such as maintaining a good body weight, having four or more hours a week of physical activity, and having a healthy diet. The most important action a woman can take against breast cancer is to detect it early. Women in their 20s and 30s should have a mammogram at least every three years, and women after the age of 40 should have one every year. Weather is slowly, slowly cooling down. Tiami Cortez has your weather next. And Kylie... And Kylie Ann Parker has your weekly Shawnee events, and that's coming up next as well. The weather is slowly changing, even though it's not feeling much like fall. It's not fall. Let's hear from Tiami Cortez about the weather this upcoming week. That is very true, Lindsay. We're supposed to be experiencing some showers on Tuesday of this week. However, we experience a sunny week with some low temperatures, but overall dry, sunny climates. As of right now, we are enjoying a high of 74 degrees here in Shawnee, with no showers and a low of 48 degrees with clear skies. For tomorrow, the temperatures will drop in the morning, where it will be approximately 46 degrees at around 8 in the morning. Then we'll be seeing the temperatures slowly increasing to around 53 degrees at noon, and the temperatures will continue at around 54 degrees for the afternoon at 5 p.m. And as night comes, temperatures will be dropping to around 46 degrees again at 8 o'clock p.m. Those temperatures will remain about the same as we go into the weekend forecast. Again, on Friday, we'll be seeing a high of 57 with a low of 32 degrees. And on Saturday, we'll be warming up a bit with sunny skies and a high of 60 degrees with a low of 42 degrees. And on Sunday, it will be getting a bit warmer at 67 degrees for the high and 54 degrees for low, but we'll be experiencing more winds with winds at 21 miles per hour. You can be relieved to know that our pollen count is going to be low for this weekend. For tomorrow, the pollen count in trees, grass, and weed is going to be low, and as for Saturday and Sunday, you won't have to worry because there'll be no activity for the pollen count for neither tree, grass, or weed. So as for allergies, you won't have to worry too much because it will be mild to no activity for this weekend. Now we can have a look at the overall overview for these seven days. Again, tomorrow we'll be enjoying a high of 57 degrees with a low of 32 degrees. And on Saturday we'll have a high of 60 degrees and a low of 42 degrees. And then on Sunday we'll keep increasing those temperatures with a high of 67 and a low of 54 degrees. And we'll end Sunday with windy skies. Then, to start the following week, be sure to cover up on Monday because we'll be experiencing thunderstorms and 80% chance of rain with a high of 68 and a low of 59. Then the rain will continue on Tuesday with a high of 61 and a low of 46 degrees. Luckily, we'll have a little break from the rain on Wednesday with only 20% chance of rain and partly cloudy skies with a high of 68 and a low of 46 degrees. 
Then, on Thursday, the showers will continue more in the afternoon with 60% chance of rain, with a high of 72 and a low of 51. Next week will surely be a wet one, so be sure to carry your umbrellas and rain boots with you and enjoy this weekend with sunny, clear skies and low pulling count. Stay tuned for next week's weather forecast. I'm Tiami Cortez, Lindsay and Hannah, back to you. Thank you, Tiami. Here's Kylie Ann Parker with your arts and entertainment. I'm Kylie Ann Parker, your arts and entertainment anchor for News 30. There are plenty of fun events going on this weekend to keep you busy. The premieres of Dance Till You Die and Behind the Mask. And of course, there's Trick or Treat tomorrow night from 5.30 to 8.30. The Department of Visual and Performance Art at St. Gregory's University had the unique opportunity to host visiting professor Angela Sigley Grossman as part of the faculty swap between St. Gregory's and DeSales University. Grossman was able to help choreograph a piece for the upcoming performance of Behind the Mask Fall Dance Concert. The concert will premiere tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. in the Sarkis Performing Arts Center with performances throughout the weekend. Log on to www.visitshawnee.com slash announcements for more information about ticket pricing and times of shows. Dance Till You Die is an original one-story play about a dance troupe with specific traditions to ward off a curse. This Halloween dance show was written and choreographed by Anastasia Wright. The show will premiere tomorrow night at the Ritz Theater. For more information about ticket pricing and times, go to www.visitshawnee.com slash announcements. The Oklahoma Baptist University Theater Department presents Much Ado About Nothing, directed by Carly Conklin and Stephen Kerr. This powerful comedy by William Shakespeare makes you laugh, breaks your heart, and pieces your heart back together. I had the chance to watch one of their rehearsals this week as they prepare for the upcoming premiere. Sophomore theater and education major Connor Gilbert explains what a typical rehearsal consists of. A normal rehearsal for us at this point, we come in and we come downstairs, we get dressed, we usually just wear our rehearsal clothes, you know, slacks, dress shoes, character shoes for girls and their dress um, skirts. And then we go upstairs, we do some warm-ups, we do vocal warm-ups, we do body warm-ups, a lot of facial warm-ups. And then we just start going. Right now we're going through run-throughs of the show. For this show, the theater department decided to take a new spin on the setup of the stage. Uh, we're trying a new thing out this, with this play. We usually just, you know, do the normal experience. You come into a show and just see it, but we're doing almost of a live studio audience. They're gonna come in and they're not gonna see just a complete backdrop around the theater. They're actually gonna see like behind set where there's um, wires coming down even, and they might even see the characters backstage sometimes before they enter. But the whole idea is that we are shooting this, shooting it as if we're in TV, TV studio and they are the live audience. They're gonna react like a live audience. It's gonna be that whole experience. So we're gonna try that and see how it creates a new atmosphere. Hopefully it'll get people more involved in the show. Much Ado About Nothing opens November 6th and runs through the 16th. Performances will be held in Craig Dorland Theater located in Shawnee Hall on the OBU campus. Along with the premiere of Much Ado About Nothing, OBU students, faculty, and alumni look forward to homecoming next week. That's all for Arts and Entertainment this week. I'm Kylie Ann Parker reporting for News 30. Two more Thunder players are injured. Abby Click has your sports next. And now we have Abby Click with our sports update. Thank you, Hannah. The Thunder adds more players to their bench after new injuries surface. Alongside Kevin Durant, Reggie Jackson, and Jeremy Lamb are out of the game due to injuries. Jackson sprained his ankle during practice before the game against the Blazers, and Lamb is out because of a back alignment. Mitch McGarry is also on the bench for five to seven weeks with a fractured foot, and Grant Jarrett is recovering from ankle surgery. It is uncertain how long Lamb and Jackson will be out for their injuries, and they will be reevaluated when they return to Oklahoma City. An OU defensive back was named a semifinalist for a prestigious award. Sophomore Zach Sanchez is one of 15 finalists for the Jim Thorpe Award. The award is given to the top defensive back in college football. The finalist of the award will be announced November 24th and the winner will be revealed December 11th at the Home Depot College Football Awards Show. 
The winner will also be honored February 3rd in Oklahoma City. Sanchez was the only semifinalist from the Big 12 Conference. Basketball season is quickly approaching. Coming off of their Sooner Athletic Conference record of 17-3 from last year, the Lady Bison basketball team will host Tabor College to kick off their season. Senior Charity Fowler discussed with Jonathan Pulasic her hopes and outlooks for this season. Now, last year was a great season. Uh, we talked a little bit before this interview about how your junior year was the best year that you've had. Yeah. How have you seen this team progress throughout your four years? Uh, and we'll get to this season later on, but through your three years so far, how have you seen it progress? Truthfully, um, we've had great players throughout I mean, all the years I've played. Um, but as of late, we've really clicked as a team. Um, I think the team unity is definitely there. Um, we have all different aspects, uh, shooting guards, we have drivers, we have great posts. Um, so we have the missing pieces that we haven't had in previous years. Now this year I saw picked second in the conference yeah. yesterday by NAI. You guys won the conference last year. So how does that motivate you as a player going in towards the season? Um, truthfully, it really motivates me. I know uh, Oklahoma City, you know, they won it all last year, and we beat them at home court. Um, so we have the potential. We have um, all the, the keys to win nationals this year. And it's really exciting um, knowing that we have all of this stuff and we can transform that into a national title. So. And Good luck to the Lady Bison this season. Shawnee Wolves football shut down Tulsa Memorial last weekend at home, winning 42-7. Shawnee's quarterback, John Jacobs, completed the game with 288 yards. The Wolves ended the game totaling 486 yards. Shawnee will be traveling to McAllister tomorrow to kick off starting at 7 p.m. The Wolves have only two games left of their regular season. That's it for this week. Hannah and Lindsay, back to you. Well, Halloween's tomorrow, and it's time for candy, costumes, and of course, pumpkins. Yes, it is, especially pumpkins. For a couple in Wisconsin, Margaret Martin and her husband have grown a family of pumpkins that are growing at an astounding rate of 40 pounds a day. The pumpkins were planted in the spring, and the largest one weighs in at 1,750 pounds. Despite this impressive size, this pumpkin does not beat the world record holder that reached 2,100 pounds on the scale. That's it for us here at News 30. We hope you have a great week and a happy Halloween. We'll see you next week for another great newscast. Good night.